and welcome to The Trail, where we have insightful conversations that inform, inspire, and encourage you to chart your path. I'm your host, Ashley Jiroge. Our guest today is Margaret Mushemi, a good friend of mine from high school and a model. So obviously, I've had a lot of pain trying to figure out how I can reshape my body before this shoot, but it's not worked out. She was crowned Miss Supranational 2015. She was fast runners up Miss Kenya 2015, and she won Miss Photogenic. I really don't know what that means, but she's here with us, and she for sure shall tell us what it means. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Ashley. So I've really struggled to find a sitting position for this particular <laughs> interview. So everyone beware. Don't look at how I'm seated. Okay, now you're going to look. But anyway, <laughs> so let's just start off back in high school when you were running for Miss Boma. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, that time it was random. I didn't really think I could model at all. But my desk mate really convinced me to do it. And she was doing, she was more of an artist so she could make my outfits because we didn't have home clothes at that time yeah. but I did it just random I joined in last minute and I was surprised I won so that's where the confidence Yeah because I remember that day in the dining hall and it was like it was like politics today and yeah. we were all screaming mm -hmm. for you and then you won yeah. and then I think Mongai was first runner first runner up. Runner up. Yeah. Okay because Mongai has come on the show mm -hmm. so it's going to be interesting the day I'm going to post both of this and then show you and then you guys can pick who you think is out <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us, when you left high school, you decided that you were going to try and do this model thing? Actually, when I left high school, I was still not that, I wouldn't call myself a model. It was just something, but people would ask me, are you going to model after high school? I'm like, I'm not sure, do you think I should? And um, immediately I finished high school, I joined university after like one year. Mm -hmm. So it was a hustle to like get money for my daily needs and uh, I just thought why can't I use my modeling or my talent to you know go hustle and I can do it like part time because it doesn't take so much time uh, modeling so I could do both school and modeling. So yeah that's why I started. I actually started from the bottom like doing activations, sometimes I do it in different clubs, trying to sell some few brands or Actually, my first modeling gig, I was on the paper, I was surprised. It was a launch for some C-Rock brand. I was just uh, one of the models just to flower up the event, and that's where it all began. How did you get that event? Um, I had to go uh, do auditions. That's the challenging part about modeling. People think you just become a model randomly. But yeah, I can be a model, but you need to audition for particular um, roles. So... Yeah, I auditioned for it. I was actually uh, rejected, but I got a second call. So after that, that's where my like, confidence also built up a bit more. So she said she got rejected to an audition. So I'm not sure how people need to look yeah. to then get into auditions. Yeah. So when you go for and this is an activation, mind you. Oh, it's like the smallest of them. Yeah. So when you go for modeling auditions, like what? Other than walking on the runway, I mean, maybe I'm the one who watches the wrong movies, but I keep thinking there's a way they always used to say that you used to be told to like, almost like, I don't know if it's not undress, but like, we want to see you in your most natural form, but in the most cloth way you can be at the same time. Um, usually they ask you to all look the same. Most of the time for auditions, they ask you to come with a vest mm -hmm. and tight pants so that they can see your sides, because size really matters. Um, in these gigs. So can I be a model? You can be a model. A plus size one? Yeah, a plus size <laughs> model. <laughs> okay. So, um, actually partly, funny enough, some people would call me a plus size model. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. um, I'd say that. In Kenya? Yeah, in Kenya. Okay, that's really, really sad mm -hmm. if she's going to be a plus size <laughs> model. So once you did the activations, what was next? gig um after i did the activations and then i started to okay i got the hype i saw i was on the newspaper so like i thought maybe i can do this and i was still hustling and getting the money i need i didn't need to depend on my parents to pay rent anymore um and i thought yeah i can help like my grandma finish paying my fees because my grandma is one who's paying for my fees and then in the middle of it all she got sick so she had to use all the money she had for medical attention she had a heart problem so i thought why can't i do miss kenya because i know um the grand prize is one million so i was like i could do a lot of this one million i could finish school do my own businesses you know it's i can do this i've done it before so why not 
And but before that, I ventured into high fashion runway. So that's where I learned how to walk on the runway. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a way to do it. Yeah, you ha you have to be good at walking straight, cut walking, um, the postures. I tried to do Miss Nairobi. That was the first pageant, and the grand prize was around uh, sixty thousand. So I was like, um, let me try this first, and then I see if I could actually now go on to the next and do uh, Miss Kenya. So I did it, I won Miss Nairobi actually during that year. And uh, people approached me and asked me, why didn't you do Miss Kenya? And I was like, okay, you know what, I'm going to try it. And so Miss Nairobi it. means you're the most beautiful girl in Nairobi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually in the modeling industry, they separate, they, they're beauty queens. And uh, there are those who do high fashion runway. This um, this mentality that once when you're a beauty queen you can't do high fashion, but it's not true. Um, and it doesn't mean when you're dark you can't do uh, beauty pageants. I believe you can do either. I did Miss Kenya that year, but I wasn't satisfied with yeah. my results. With your first runners up. Yeah. Okay. At least the, the complaints you have are like. Or changes for some of us because, like, we can't even get into an audition. I guess there would be a way that a lot of people out. If you get, get into an audition, is there a way you just sit it out? Because obviously, you can't do it, you can do it. Is there a way you sit it out before the judges start to see you? Oh, yeah, it's a process actually. One of the toughest actually auditions I've gone for for Samantha Bridal. Um, so many models try out over 100, you can't be late. And the first cutout they do is body measurements and height. And then after that, now is the walk. That's the main part, part, um, part actually. So every, the judges get to see how everyone is walking and uh, cut, they cut down to like six models only out of 100. It's tough, but you just need to have faith, I think. And me, I've been rejected so many times when I'm doing um, auditions, but for you to become successful, you can't give up. Because I started with so many models from before until by the time I was on my second year of modeling, um, like half of them had already quit. So how did you get to Miss Supranational? And what's the um, process to get there? During my year when I did Miss Kenya, um, I didn't win, but um, a group of people thought uh, they can't just waste the talent they saw uh, on the runway, so they approached me and told me, Maggie, uh, we think you were, you did also, like you really did well, so we're going to send you to a different pageant because we believe you can still represent the country as Miss Kenya. So that's when I went, uh, they sent me to Poland to do Miss Supranational, which had um, around 84 contestants from different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But Miss Supranational um, mostly involves European countries, like all European countries do it, and um, it's more of a modeling competition. It was one of the hardest times of my life, I won't even lie, during that time, because I didn't have that much support from the country because it's not yet recognized as Miss Supranational, because there is no franchise holder in Kenya such that they can get sponsors to maybe give me clothes or give me shoes. Um, I had to really hustle to get such things. So where do you get them? Um, a few designers like Afro Street Collections by Yvonne. She's one who dressed me for the whole event. She didn't even charge me. When I got there, I didn't have enough, even my national costume, such things I hadn't. It was all last minute. But I remember there's a time in the, uh, during, um, in the middle of the pageant I actually sat down in my room and started crying because people from different countries actually, like India, you find they have like 12 suitcases of clothes what? with different designers, gowns worth over 400,000 and I am all simple. I mean, it's a local designer um, who's dressing me and her garments are so beautiful but sometimes you just can't compare. Yeah. But character really matters because they follow up every minute of it. And the good thing, I, I made it through and I beat all those girls and became top uh, top 20 yeah. and second girl in Africa. You were number 16. I was position 16 and, and people, Rwanda 15. And people at that point have got those clues from where I am. Yeah. That was like so amazing. Do you think if you had better clues, you'd have been like position? I think, yeah. If um, our country generally as Kenya supports uh, such talent, um, I think we can get so far. 
in, in it because um, things like uh, national costume it's something if you have enough resources you can do a lot in it because that's one of the parts of the competition oh so you actually get marks for it yeah for oh, the national okay. costume and um, we struggled with the designer and we came up with a national costume actually mine was ranked top 10 in the whole world and it was all last minute during the competition i put on a smile you always have to smile and look happy and yeah and, and let me tell you because the rest of us only see these things on instagram and i'm an avid follower of my because you're gonna follow your body goals so you see those pictures and it's like oh my god i want to be in her shoes you have no idea what's really going on behind the scenes yeah so how's school been like for you with modeling and how have you managed to balance it at all um i did my first year and second year of university before I, I did any of the pageants because uh, mostly the high fashion runways. Um, university, the good thing, it doesn't take the whole day and I take a kind of a very difficult course. Um, so yeah, she does financial engineering. engineering yeah. Some of us did procurement, <laughs> which is called pack packaging smoothies by some of my friends. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so yeah, financial engineering needs you to put in some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and my classmates would be at home probably reading, and I'm trying to train for um, maybe a runway the next week. So it's not easy, but it can be done. So guys, it's been a really good show finding out how people get to become Miss Supranational. I had to Google it before the show, and it means something about transversing nationalities and being like the biggest authority in beauty. God knows um, some of us might never get there unless we get plastic surgery, but it's all good. So follow Margaret on her social media page and of course subscribe to her YouTube channel and be back for the next part where she tells us how you can be able to commercialize your good looks or your good body.